I am Emery of uh, DIY Cyborg, and I uh, am making a video of one of my first products. It's an Omron G5 uh, relay board. Um, this uses uh, Omron G5 LE 5 volt DC relays, or uh, we can also use uh, some uh, other brand products that fit the same footprint with the same specifications. Um, this uh, relay handles 250 volts AC at 10 amps. Um, so I designed this product, uh, hopefully, uh, to be used for uh, people who are interested in home automation or uh, doing hydroponics or uh, festival lighting effects like uh, winter uh, Christmas lighting or, or projects like that. So, um, assembling this board is uh, fairly simple. We don't have very many components. Uh, we have a diode here, and if you take a look at the diode, uh, you just need to make sure that you get the black mark facing towards the bottom of the board. And then we have a, a LED and a resistor. And this resistor controls the current going through this LED and also the LED inside of our opto-isolator, which is this package here. So uh, assembling the board is fairly simple. The, L the um, diode needs to go in the right direction. The LED needs to go in the right direction. The resistor doesn't matter. You can put it in any direction you want. And with our opto isolator, be sure that pin one is facing the bottom of the board towards the LED. I mean, towards the relay. So here is our pin one marker here. I don't know if you can see it on my camera. So I would advise that you start by assembling the board with the diode and the resistor first, then put in the LED and the opto isolator. Next, put in our the transistor. And then from there, you can ins uh, install the header pins, then the uh, screw terminals, make sure the openings face out, and finally the relay. So assemble the board from the smallest component to the largest component. That's the easiest method I've found. When using this board, it's very important that you have some kind of standoff. Uh, you want to make sure that the high voltage area is not in contact with uh, anything that could catch fire or uh, could bridge the contacts like anything metal. Uh, also, I use fairly short standoffs. Uh, this is important because you don't want uh, a whole lot of space for something to go underneath it and inadvertently make contact with it, like a uh, child's finger or some some object falling into your uh, container. I would also highly recommend that you have this contained inside of a closed box if possible. Okay, so uh, why is this or designed in this uh, particular manner, having these narrow strips here. If you've ever looked at uh, another uh, quad relay board, you'll find that they use one single uh, package for all the opto isolators. They have a single header set, um, and you have a single common ground. And at first glance, this might be a little bit uh, more difficult to use because you have to provide a common ground for each pin here. You also need to provide a coil voltage for each pin. So why did I do that? The idea was that you don't often need four relays. Uh, many times you need only three relays. Or maybe you only need two relays. So this board is designed so that you could cut it into individual components. So if you notice here, we have a, a silk screen line. On future versions of this board, this will snap apart. But on the current version, you have to cut it uh, by hand with a saw or clips or uh, PCB break. But you can break this board into four individual relay units, and each one has its own mounting holes and all of the same components. So uh, you can use one pr product for multiple projects. Or you could distribute the relays where they're uh, closest to the object you want to switch on and off. OK, so the coil voltage is uh, independent of the main uh, logic voltage. And why would I do that if we have a 5 volt DC relay controlling it with 5 volt logic? Well, maybe you're not using 5 volt logic. Maybe you're using 3.3 volt logic, and you need a separate power supply for your relays. Or possibly you're using this project on a robot, and you don't want to have uh, motor control power supply and your logic power supply on the same system. So you want to isolate that out so that you don't have noise coming from your your high voltage or your high current uh, needs affecting your logic supply. So the idea was to make this board as uh, flexible as possible. 
So let's uh, just connect it up here. I have a uh, Arduino uh, and a power supply here, and I'm just running the Blink uh, project, Blink Sketch. Um, so we have a blinking LED here, and we should have a switching on and off effect here. So first we have our ground, which will go to the top pin. And then the center pin is our signal. So this will be coming from pin 13 on the Arduino. And you can see our LED is already lighting on and off. That means the left half of our opto-isolator is functioning. Uh, if the LED didn't come on, then either the LED or the opto-isolator had been damaged somehow. And finally, our coil voltage should allow our coil to switch. So maybe you can hear it, hopefully. Okay, so in a moment I'll do another demo with this actually hooked up to the lamp that's powering my desk light. And sorry, by the way, my desk area doesn't have very great lighting, and it's also quite messy, so the camera image might not be all that great. But, uh, it is what it is. So one final note I wanted to mention about the transistor that I'm using here. Um, you might have noticed that there's no bias resistors on my transistor. Um, I, there was no specific reason why I chose not to do that other than it's uh, an easier to assemble uh, component uh, circuit board. It uses less components. Um, but it's probably not the best way to run a uh, transistor without any biasing. But it functions. It doesn't overheat, so we're OK. Um, but this transistor is kind of an oddball uh, Toshiba part number. It's a part uh, PNP transistor. TSA1015, uh, and um, the reason why it's a little bit oddball is the pin order is a little bit different than most uh, PNP transistors. So if you need to replace this for any reason, uh, please be sure to check the, the data sheet and make sure you get a transistor with the right pin order. So on this transistor, pin 1 is the emitter, pin 2 is our collector, and pin 3 is the base. So it's a little bit out of order. So that's that. Um, you notice uh, on my board that I have a white opto-isolator and a black one. That's because this board will support, as far as I know so far anyway, two different opto-isolators, which I can source here. Um, so if you receive the package with black or white ones, don't worry. Um, they both work just fine. And again, also the Amron relays are probably not going to be in the uh, commercial version of the product because they're considerably more expensive than some of the other parts I can get. So you might see different relays in your package. Okay, thank you.